Well, good evening. Welcome to our presentation on a community solar project um, here in Haverford Township. First, I'd like to thank Brian Barrett, the Director of Recreation here in Haverford Township for his welcoming and introductory remarks. Unfortunately, we didn't record that in the Zoom, but Brian talked a bit about the history of the CREC and the Recreation Department's mission to provide um, a healthy environment for the residents of Haverford Township and how the CREC um, is an environmentally friendly building and having solar panels on the CREC would contribute to furthering the mission of the Recreation Department. My name is Victor Dane. I'm a Haverford resident. I live in Coopertown, and I'm also a professor of mathematics at Bryn Mawr College. And I'm working with two of my students this summer, Li Wei Yang, who's a rising senior at Bryn Mawr College, and John Luca Fenton, who's a rising senior at Haverford College, to look into this idea of a community solar project. And we've been working with Joy Baxter, a Haverford Township resident, who had been working in a different direction on this project before we got started. She's having a focus on bringing solar panels to the school district and to houses of worship. But the common theme is how do we provide financial support for solar panels for a nonprofit organization? I know some of you are interested in having solar panels on your own home. And at the end of the talk, we'll have some resources, particularly a group called Solarize Delco, that can help you bring solar panels to your house. But our presentation is about bringing solar panels to buildings in the township um, or the schools or churches. So an overview of what we'll be talking about tonight. First, why this idea of a community solar project. Then talking about the framework for solar financing in general, then we'll talk about here in Haverford Township, what are the possibilities we have here to bring solar to the township? And then looking to the future, that although we've been researching this project over the summer, there's still quite a few questions um, we have about how to do it. There are a number of different options or different ways it could be done. And so there's still much more for us to do before we could have a final plan of how to carry out this project. So we'll end by laying out some of those different issues. So as a start, um, why are we looking at solar panels? And as you're all aware, the world is facing challenging environmental problems from climate change due to too much carbon going in the atmosphere. And when we make electricity from fossil fuels, that contributes to the climate change, the global warming. And so if we can have more solar panels, that would reduce the amount of fossil fuels needed to make electricity. The book Project Drawdown has come up with 100 possible solutions to help reverse global warming. And they rank them by their, diff their various effectiveness in terms of how big an impact they can have on reducing the carbon in the atmosphere. The number 10 solution in their list is rooftop solar. So rooftop solar is a very good initiative to take to help with global warming problems. And the challenge now is to scale up so that we can have more and more solar panels on more roofs helping with the problem. As we began looking into this project, one of the first things we learned about was how Germany has handled its energy revolution they're really a world leader in trying to transition from fossil fuels and nuclear power into renewable energy. And what we learned about is how individual people coming together in co-ops or cooperatives have funded a lot of the renewable energy projects in Germany. This pie chart shows that 31% of the projects, this dates from 2016, but it's still relevant today, 31% of the renewable energy projects were funded by private people working together, another 10% by groups of farmers, and 13% by trade groups. So that's almost, that's more than 50% of the solar projects were funded um, in various ways by individuals working together. 
That's compared to the big banks and investment funds that funded 13%, project developers, and then the utility companies had only financed 5% of the projects. This idea of community members coming together, deciding that for their community, they want solar panels or wind turbines, raising the funds and carrying the project out is very different than how we typically think of doing things in the United States, where we're looking for big organizations, um, the government, the energy companies to take the lead in developing these renewable energy projects. So our thought was, well, why can't we bring this idea of community-centered action here to Haverford Township and be a leader showing other communities in Pennsylvania and around the country that citizens working together can make a positive contribution to address climate change. Here we have a short movie by Will Grant, who's a noted environmentalist and communications expert, talking about different levels of action that one can address, that one can use to address climate change. In terms of a lot of social change, and especially in relation to the environment, I think of the, what I call the four levels of action. The first is individual action. The second is um, action with my friends and family, the folks I'm directly connected to. The third is community and local institutions. And the fourth is the economy and policy change and changing laws. And so, you know, in the environment, level one is, yeah, I recycle, I use less, I drive less. Level two is I get me and my family to do that. And maybe I put solar panels on my roof. You know? um, and maybe I join a community supported agriculture, a CSA. Level three is um, when, that's when I start to do things like change the way the schools that I'm connected to, right? The way that I change my workplace, that maybe I get my, I organize in my town, right? To start moving towards um, a community solar array or that I start to, you know, I, I go into the industries that I work in and I make changes. And the idea for level three for me is the place where it's at the level of institution and groups, but where I'm still known as a person, you know? Um, and so the example, and the other model that I give for, uh, for level three is if I, can get a, if I can get in touch with a person who's in charge within about a week and get a meeting, that's what I would consider to be about level three. Like with some work, I can get a, sh I can get a brief meeting with the mayor of my town, right? And then level four is, like I say, policy. It's change the law. It's write your congressperson. It's um, boycott this product. And the environmental movement, I think, in a lot of ways, has given the message that's been at level one and level four, right? Change individual actions or sign this petition, lobby this person, right? And the thing is, I think our greatest impact is actually at level two and level three, and especially level three. And when I, the reason that I say that is, if I change a local institution or something that I'm involved in, I'm not just impacting my life, I'm impacting the lives of hundreds or maybe thousands of people. I'm also changing an institution and then other institutions can take a look at that and take the model for that change. Um, so an example is, like say I get the local school um, to put solar panels on their roofs. I can actually get that done. That's a project that I can see through beginning to end in a year or two. And I can talk to all the people who are involved in it. And I can, figure out, I can figure out the economics of that. Like how much would it save and how much would it work and what would the cost be? I can organize and you know, create a, co a coalition to get it done. Um, and I can do this part time. You know, I don't have to do this full time. But the conversation that I, have, that I, that I get to um, generate at the school is a big piece of the change. Right? That the conversation with the principals and with the students and with the PTA is as useful as the change itself. And we're getting into this idea of, oh, we could do something about this. And then when the solar panels go up, then that means all of the other schools in the neighborhood or in my city have to go, why don't, why don't we have solar panels? I mean, this school did it. And so that's a level of a change that I think that we ought to be focusing on. Because I, and I think specifically with Drawdown, like the, there's these hundred solutions that are named in Drawdown. And um, the question is, how are they going to be implemented? But one of the things that um, the project did is that they looked at pro projects that were happening at what, you know, I've heard Paul Hawkins call from the middle out, not just from the grassroots up, not just from the top down, but from most of those changes were organized by people working at level three. 
So hi everyone, my name is Li Wei. So um, followed by what the video was introducing, our project is gonna be a um, level three action and we wanna do it in Haverford. Oh, one is because we, we know that the township is working or is already working hard into, you know, bring more environmental changes into the community. We are in the Sierra Club ready for a hundred campaign and targeting for 100% renewable energy. And uh, we also want to complement uh, the clean energy aspect of the cra of crack. As what Brian mentioned before, we want to continue on um, the idea of more environmental education and reducing carbon footprint. footprint. And also we know that the township is working on a lot of uh, green programs. For example, the ring garden programs as uh, the picture on the right side uh, is showing. And also we have a climate action plan and we put LED street lights up. And also the environmental uh, advisory committee has been working hard on bringing more green projects into Haverford. So we wanna continue on these green initiatives. And in the meanwhile, we want to we also think that it's a very good way to bring the community together so that all the members, all the business can be part of the planning process and can have their own voice in it. And it's a good way that we can bring more uh, chances or uh, opportunities for local business and installers. We're gonna have more chances to work with uh, the school district we can bring more clean energy topics into the classroom and maybe take the kids out to the side and let them see what the solar project is like. And in the meanwhile, we're also looking, uh, exploring the possibilities of having job training programs for people who need it and uh, providing more job op opportunities for them. And okay, uh, to explain uh, what a community solar project is here is that we are going to have all the community members together and we together are going to finance the solar project so we can all be part of it. And some, uh, some financial incentives we have for, some financial incentives we have for uh, you know, doing solar here is um, that we have two big major incentives from the government, the tax credit and also the depreciation deduction. The way that tax credit works is that you can take the amount of um, the tax credit you own and deduct it from the income tax you owe. So uh, for example, for this year, the amount eligible is 26% of the installation cost. And next year, it's going to decrease to 22%. And uh, sadly, um, in 2022, the percentage is going to drop to 10% and for business only. So if we want to do the project, it's uh, crucial that we get it done by the end of 2021. And move on to the depreciation deduction. It works very similarly to the tax credit. Uh, some difference is that the amount eligible for deduction is um, about 22% of the installation cost. And also there's a federal level of deduction and the state level of deduction. The federal level of deduction depends on individual's income and for the state level, Pennsylvania follows the five-year Mercer schedule and the overall percentage is about 3.07%. And um, as you can see, not all of the financial incentives are for tax, but unfortunately nonprofits and townships don't pay tax. So um, we can't use any of those financial incentives for them. That's why we're introducing a solution called public-private partnership. Uh, what it means that is that uh, the individual investors are going to form a limited liability company, an LLC, and the LLC is going to finance and own the solar panels and so that we can get all the tax benefits. And in the meanwhile, the LLC is also going to sign a power purchase agreement with the township so that the township will purchase electricity from the LLC at a competitive rate. And uh, we have, uh, to be more intuitive, we have a structure here of what we are thinking about at this point. So our community investors are going to form an LLC and 
some of uh, the two major revenue streams for the LLC is first uh, from the tax incentive to the government and also from PPA um, that the township is going to purchase the energy generated by our solar system. And in the meanwhile, uh, the major cost for LLC will be uh, the installation cost. Great. Hi, so I'm John Luca. I'm a fellow student working with Victor and Leeway. And now I'm going to be transferring Leeway's structure into the real world. So this LLC structure, while it is challenging and complex, is not completely new. Um, there are currently over 15 nonprofits in the U.S. that use this financial model. And so here's just one example of one. It's the St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Medford, New Jersey. And so if you go to the next slide, um, the challenge for us in PA is that while this has been replicated in other states, the um, financial constraints in PA in terms of electricity um, charges and solar incentives make it um, even more difficult. So for us, if you look at these, uh, just this data, uh, electricity costs in PA are lower than New Jersey, our neighbor, um, and then even almost twice as low as what they are in California. So what that means for this project is it makes it a little more difficult for us to um, create a high level of return of investment since we can't charge as much for the electricity we're selling back to the township. And sort of compounding on this is the fact that Pennsylvania, because of its abundance of um, natural gas resources, has pretty low um, solar incentives. So as one of the main types of solar incentives are SRECs, or Solar Renewable Energy Credits. And what these credits are, are their money given directly to energy, pro energy producers who are producing renewable energy. And so in just as a, a, a comparison here, in Pennsylvania, you, you receive $27 for each megawatt of renewable energy you produce, that's solar. Whereas if you go over one state to New Jersey, it's $233 per megawatt. So even if you don't understand what an SREC is or what a megawatt is, it becomes pretty clear that um, Pennsylvania is, is you know, in a tougher spot when it comes to making these projects work out. But the good news for us is that we've been working hard and oh, how, we have, we've done our research and it, it, it is possible for Harvard Township to pull this up, pull this off. And if we are able to pull it off, it really could become this model for a state where solar is not discouraged, but it's not as encouraged as it is in other states. So now turning specifically to Haverford, we're gonna highlight some of the key sites we think are exciting opportunities for solar. And so the first one have we already touched upon a bit is the uh, Creck building. And so as, as, our, as Brian talked about in, our, in the introduction, this building was built to elite standard. It has geothermal heating and cooling, and it really is this environmental education center. So it, it's, its whole purpose, or part of its whole purpose is really to champion an environmental message. So that's, that's sort of our thinking as to why we want to cite it here. And even just looking at the mission statement of the CREC, you can see on the right here, it's you know, the mission of the CREC is to create a healthier environment and healthier individuals through education and programs. So this is, this is sort of a marquee example of what that might look like. So in our research so far, we've, we've fielded three different estimates for the Creck roof and sort of its uh, project scope and what a uh, solar panel array might look like on the roof. And so here's one example. This is from Independent Solar, which is a local solar installer who was kind enough to put this together for us. So as you look at the diagram, um, what you're looking at is the mock draw And as you see, um, they're all green. And so um, what green means is that they have excellent solar potential. So pretty much the entire roof has almost ideal perfect, uh, perfect solar potential. There's very minimal trees around the building and there's, it's south, south facing. And as Brian was saying, it was built sort of with solar in mind. And then it's, it's interesting too, you'll notice really the only area where it's not fully green is that one little strip of brown right there. And that's because of the shading from the central crack roof. So besides that little bit of shading, these roofs are really perfect for solar. And that's what excites us. And what you're looking at now is um, more detailed information about what this project is capable of. So if you look first at the left, you're looking at a comparison between the current crack energy use and the uh, solar potential of this array. So the gray is what the crack currently uses um, in terms of energy demand, and the yellow is the solar capability. And the, the solar capability is pretty intuitive. 
you can see that in the summertime it's higher obviously because there's more sun and it's less so in the winter time and what this all sort of averages out to you'll see on the right without getting super technical or for those who want to get technical you can see here that the this array can uh or will produce about two to three hundred kilowatts of peak power and that's about 200 to 400,000 kilowatts of energy per year. And just to give sort of a layman's equivalent, that's about 23 residential homes. So it's a pretty sizable array and it would have a pretty uh, remarkable impact. And just going back to our last point, this access, uh, the solar access rating is almost perfect. And another site we're investigating but have admittedly less of a detailed uh, uh, project scope for is the scanium, the ice scanning rate in Haverford Township. Um, just based off initial analysis, it again has excellent solar potential. So if you're looking just at these pictures below, you'll see that it's, it's a clean flat roof with minimal obstructions um, and is facing uh, towards an ideal position. And what's also interesting about this roof is that it's larger than the crack roof and would actually hold a larger array. So this, this, um, this potential array would be about 25% larger than the crack array and would be between 200 and 350 kilowatts, depending on the actual size of the final array. And uh, just for sort of reference, this would be about 25% of the scadium's total energy needs. Okay, so here's a quick summary of what we've talked about so far in terms of project cape possibilities in Haverford. Looking first at the crack building, we look at a project that is um, between 200 and 250,000. 200, sorry, 200 and 250 kilowatts of peak power and would cover about 40 to 60 percent of the crack's energy needs, depending on um, the size of the ray, weather conditions, etc. And then looking at the stadium, we see a slightly bigger array at about 200 to 300 kilowatt peak. And this would actually only cover 25 percent of the stadium, but that's just because the stadium has a much higher energy demand because of the ice and keeping it cool. And then finally, looking to the right, we get down to the nuts and bolts of cost. So each of these projects would be around $500,000. And as Liwei was mentioning, what really makes solar worthwhile are these federal and state tax credits. And with the township itself not being able to cash in on these tax credits, it really will have to come from outside investors, this funding. And, and those outside investors in our unique model is from the community. And so what that's really exciting about our project is we're sort of hitting two birds with one stone, if you will. So we have, we're, we're dancing around the tax credit issue and we're also making this a true community project. And Joy's gonna talk more about that financing structure now. Did we lose Joy? Yeah. I think Joy is, um, mute, is muted. She there? Well, I guess in the meantime, oh, is she there? Joy, are you there? Oh, there you go. Okay. Sorry about that. I yeah. wasn't able to unmute. So going back through this um, structure again, the, we, it centers around the LLC company. So the idea is to get community investors to form an LLC company that interacts with the township through a power purchase agreement. And this is a 20 year agreement. The LLC company buys the power or buys the solar array from the installer and owns it on the township building during the time of the power purchase agreement. And the LLC company, unlike the township, is able to get the tax incentives and that passes through to the LLC members. In addition to this, we are looking um, for outside funding and people also to help us to look for outside funding for the solar and way, and that would go we think to directly to the installer. Um, so the LLC would be um, a smaller, uh, have a smaller amount of the array. Now the makeup of the LLC, we are looking 
at small investors to um, involve a lot of the community. A small investor for the projects um, that have gone through for houses of worship is generally $5,000. And this is not a donation, it's an investment, but it's a socially conscious investment. So people, you would expect to get a return on investment of one to 3%. We're also interested in larger investors, so you could increase the investment above 5,000 and even having possible angel or impact in investors. For, so for the crack project, even though it's around $500,000, that means we only really need 100 small investors. The, now, the PPA, the Power Purchase Agreement, is for 20 years, and that's mandated by the government. But there are options for the township to buy out the agreement um, af after six years. So this buyout time is both um, better for the township, they would get a better return um, on the small investment that they would have to put in at year six, and it is better for the investors to get a better return. So for the outside funding, we're considering getting um, foundation or government grants, and also to have community donors. So say if somebody doesn't want to do the big $5,000 investment, um, they can maybe donate to a Haverford Township nonprofit, maybe have a, a solar panel in honor of a teacher or um, another family member. And then that nonprofit, so they would get a tax deductible donation, and then that would go through to the community solar project. Another option um, is to expand this. Um, our, most of our Haverford Township school buildings are, have also have excellent solar potential. And I have a, a son who's at Coopertown Elementary and a daughter who's at the middle school. But I think the first place that would be great to put solar is on the new Linwood Elementary School, primarily because it's built, it's being built with, to be very energy efficient. Um, so that would be about a 300 kilowatt system. And I think that that would cover about 100% of the electricity usage. So as I mentioned at the beginning, although we've been figuring out a lot and all this information our group has shared with you um, speaks to that. There's still quite a few questions um, that we're trying to resolve. Um, the, the first that we've learned about, we heard that the LLC, the main idea for using that roundabout way of buying the solar panels for the township is that the private organ company could get the tax credit and the depreciation credit, which is about 40% of the cost of the panels. So that would significantly reduce their cost and the individual investors would apply that tax credit to their individual tax account. But we've been learning that they can actually only apply the income to their passive income. And that's things like renting a house or, sorry, being a landlord on a rental property or being an investor in a company like this where you're an owner but you're not really doing anything. And most people don't really have a lot of passive income. So we're trying to understand how the investors could best benefit um, given this passive income hurdle. Then there are benefits and drawbacks in all these different ways of doing it. For example, the number of investors, solar companies often work with um, investors who are eager to get this big tax break and would like to fund all by themselves large solar projects. Um, so that might be one way to go. It would be the easiest administratively. Um, it would just involve one person who would sign these documents with the solar company and the township. But on the other hand, these investors often want a high rate of return, maybe 10 or 12%. And because of the low price of electricity in Pennsylvania, 
that would end up costing the electricity that the township would buy to be much higher and potentially not at all competitive. On the other hand, with our community investor group, because we would have more investors, there would be more overhead um, forms and paperwork that would have to be dealt with, um, and so more headaches. Um, but we think the socially conscious community investor who's doing this um, to help with the environment and because of their pride in Haverford Township would be willing to accept a lower rate of return, and it might be in the neighborhood of 1% to 3%, but that would make the project financially viable for the township. Um, so that was kind of a reason why we're willing to undertake all this extra work to try to make it happen. And the question is how many investors would one want in a group? We talked of a minimum investment of $5,000. Um, is that a, an amount that could work out? We mentioned this trade off between the return of investment for the individual versus how much the electricity would cost the township. And so trying to find a good medium there. And Joy mentioned that in the financial analysis, what actually seems to be the best is for the township to buy back the solar panels after six years. So the, all the tax benefits have been realized by the LLC, so they can then sell the township the solar panels at the cheapest possible price, get back their investment, and then the township can benefit for the next 25 to 30 years from having these solar panels with no additional cost. Some considerations on the township, and I noticed we we're pleased to have a couple of commissioners with us here. Um, my own commissioner, Andy Lewis, brought up this idea at the most recent commissioners meeting to let them know that our community group was exploring this option. And the commissioners said, um, please go ahead, um, look into it, tell us what you find. But for example, their legalities, typically the township has a two to three year energy contract. So would it be allowed to do a 20 year power purchase agreement? Often the township, when it um, does projects is required to do competitive bidding. Would there have to be competitive bidding between our Haverford LLC and other LLCs that might want to get in on the project? And then given all that the world is facing and Haverford Township and its um, administrators and staff are busy too, does the township have the capacity to undertake a new project like this at the present time? Legislative considerations were heard that certainly in Pennsylvania, um, there's not a strong um, support financially for solar at the federal level. The tax credits are beginning to phase out, but maybe in the next year there'll be changes in the political situation that could um, support the project actually in a better way. So here we have a possible timeline. Of course, this really depends on the commissioners, but this is one way that we can meet what we view as kind of a key goal which is to get the project completed or at least started um, with the contract signed and construction underway by December 2021. So we can still get the 22% tax credit before it dips to 10%. So over the summer, we've begun doing our uh, initial um, research. This is our first outreach meeting. In early September, we hope to speak to the Board of Commissioners, um, give them our findings a little more detailed than we did um, tonight, but lay out some of these options for the board to begin thinking about. Through the fall, we hope to be researching more nitty gritty and we hope um, that we'll be having some financial experts join our team to help figure out some of these complexities. Um, perhaps by the end of 2020, um, the board might make a decision about recommending which of these different approaches they'd like us to pursue. And then through the spring and summer, we would be signing up investors um, getting the LLC formalized and then signing these contracts for the power purchase agreement and with the solar installer to begin the actual construction before the end of 2021. So we want you, and we're so excited to have so many people come out to our meeting tonight. Um, we've had 44, 45 people, and that's an amazing turnout. Um, so some of the ways you might be involved, again, we're at a preliminary stage. So we're not in any shape to say exactly what the LLC would be, the return investment. But if this sounds interesting to you and you think you might be one of the investors that you feel a good use of your um, finances would be to support the township to move in this direction and be a leader in Pennsylvania, um, would love you to let us know. 
Um, if at the moment, um, in the next few minutes, or as the meeting goes on, you're, you'd like to let us know, you can just send a chat um, to us saying your name, email, and what you might be interested in, but you can also um, email John Luca at some point and let him know. So one would be we're looking for investors with um, this moderate return, that's the best we can offer. Two, we need experts. Um, this LLC, the securities laws about passive income, it's all complex. And so if any of you are tax lawyers, security lawyers, accountants, financial service advisors, would like to get involved in our Haverford project, um, we'd love to have you um, join us and share your expertise. We heard from Joy of the possibility of doing this same type of project for the school district that we're trying with these township buildings. Um, so there's a lot of room for people to join our planning team and help us figure this out, um, either with the Haverford Township projects or with the school district um, project. So if you'd like to play a more active role, we'd love to have you um, join us in that fashion too. So here are some resources and I'll see if I can put them in the chat or maybe um, one of the other uh, team members can copy those and paste it into the chat for everybody to see. Um, we'll have the slides and a bit of a video, we started a little late, available for people so you can come back to this. But as I mentioned at the beginning, the group Solarize Delco is a one shop one-stop shop to find out how to put solar panels on your house and they have contracted with a company um, that can do that for you. Um, if you want to learn more about solarizing your home or business, here's a nice video presentation um, with a link. Um, although we were talking about the township buildings, the school district, um, we'll see in a sec that Joy is going to be doing a workshop particularly focused on houses of worship. But if you're involved in another nonprofit, for example, the YMCA, Maybe you want to talk with their management to get them thinking about solarizing their nonprofit. Um, but Joy is going to be holding a session July 27th, um, examining these issues um, specifically as they apply to houses of worship. And this is part of the mainline interfaith dream group monthly meeting. Um, so if that's a piece of this issue that you'd like to be engaged in, you're, you're welcome to join that meeting. Um, let me end this part of the presentation before we get to questions and discussions with a big thank you. First of all, to Haverford Township, our Board of Commissioners for their encouragement, the Environmental Advisory Committee with whom we've been speaking, who's given us lots of very helpful suggestions, and Brian Barrett and the Haverford Township Recreation Department um, for their support and leadership. I'd like to thank both Haverford College and Brynmark College who um, have provided us with these fabulous students, John Luca and Lee Wei. And also Bryn Mawr was able to fund both of them with stipends to help them do this summer internship work. John Luca mentioned that three different solar companies have been very helpful in answering our questions and giving us some preliminary um, estimates about solar possibilities. Um, independent solar down in Swarthmore, Solar States, which is a very socially conscious business located downtown in Philadelphia, and Superior Solar Design in King of Prussia. So thank you to all of them for your help.